Hi, uh, my name is Bora. Uh, I'm a Vice President of Product at 1010 Data. And my name is Ariel, and I lead Growth and Strategy. And today we are going to talk about retail analytics. Uh, and thanks for joining us. This is the last day of the conference, right before lunch. Uh, we appreciate you taking time. Uh, so even though our slide says retail, and you're not, maybe you're not in retail, so don't despair. There are a lot of things you will find that are relevant. If you're selling anything at all, we will have some uh, slides and demos about Affinity, which you could use. Uh, also, we have time series analytics, uh, which will be relevant to probably many of you. Uh, and when we come to the slides where we talk about our customers, you will see we have a mix of retailers and investment banks, because at the end of the day, a lot of the problems are uh, inherently time series problems. So let's go through a high level summary of what you're gonna learn today. Uh, first, we'll show you how our customers who typically work with hundreds of billions up to trillions of data uh, do certain types of analysis. One of them is an affinity analysis, a market basket analysis. Uh, we'll walk you through how we can do this inside Tableau using our backend, and then we'll move into a more generic time series use case in Tableau if you ever use densification. There are a lot of problems when you try to align time series or uh, fill gaps. We'll show you how you can bring a promotion calendar and to understand the effect of promotions on your uh, sales. So first of all, let's frame the problem. What does a uh, retailer need uh, in today's analytical world? First of all, when we deal with retailers, they have a lot of data sources. We generally deal with 100 plus t tables uh, in our system. This is because if you have point of sale systems, that's one data source. You may be managing uh, your inventory in some other place. You have product attributes on a separate table. If you have loyalty data, that will be another table. You may have data on your competitor's sales and pricing, that will be another table. And a lot of the times when you're trying to do retail analytics, you have to bring all of these things and also harmonize. So that leads us to the data quality, the second segment, uh, part of the slide. And data quality not necessarily means your data is terrible, but if you have two different data sources that are speaking different languages, that is a data quality issue. And uh, one of the problems a lot of retailers and uh, package good companies that their manufacturers face today is, if you go to Amazon, they have a complete different product hierarchy. If you go to Walmart, they have a completely different product hierarchy. If you want to understand how am I doing in a category, the question is, what is a category? And if you want to look across multiple retailers and see how you're doing in Walmart versus Sam's Club versus Amazon, that becomes a difficult problem because you have to mitigate those differences. So a lot of our customers, we ingest their data and we try to mitigate these problems. In some cases, you, could, you can call it an ELT process. In some cases, we have a data science team that develops some machine learning algorithms to deal with semantic issues and categorization, it reads descriptions and uh, so on. And lastly, the volumes are really large. And I'll give you some examples of the scale of uh, you know, uh, a, a, um, a day of uh, transactions on a typical retail store that we deal with. So let's look at some numbers. Uh, this is a mix of numbers from different retailers we work with. Some of them are very large, as you could tell. Because to, to have 20 billion items scanned in a given day, you can imagine you have to be one of the biggest retailers in the country, given the uh, population of the country. So uh, really high number of the daily transactions, hundreds of tables, and millions of items in the inventory that we have to track uh, the attributes of. Uh, so in a lot of the cases, you can imagine we have joins of hundreds of billions of rows with another 10 billion row table, and all of this has to work really fast for them to be able to do day-to-day -day analysis. So this is a list of our customers, and you could see, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have a wide variety of them. There are retailers in there. They have stores, they sell stuff, they want to understand how to better man manage their inventory, what kind of deals they have to offer, how to lay out their stores to optimize for sales. We have, uh, Suppliers in there who want to understand how they can incentivize a store to better sell their items, what kind of offers they should uh, come up with, how they avoid uh, out of stock problems by predicting the demand and shipping the goods. Some of the uh, suppliers deliver the goods themselves to the stores. So we have this full end to end chain covered from uh, who's selling, uh, who, who's trying to put their uh, goods on the shelves, and how do they collaborate with each other. And you can also see some investment banks in there. Uh, also, uh, some credit scoring companies, as I was saying, uh, another business we have is uh, mortgage-backed securities and fixed income. So we have a lot of stock market data. Uh, and again, not, you know, in its nature, it's also time series. So the same methods we use for retail apply pretty closely to that, uh, that market as well. 
And uh, of course, we have to have a, a testimonial there. Uh, so Dollar General is one of our customers. And given the volume of the data, now this is even a bigger problem because as time passes, uh, you cr uh, collect even more analytics on your users. Back in the day, they had to wait uh, for reports. At the end of the month, we'll do a summary. Now they can do it on demand. They do it every day. And we'll give you detailed examples of what, what we mean by scale and fast. OK, so why is analytics important for retailers? Uh, and you can see the uh, different shaded things in the background, like Amazon is one of them, right? Amazon is uh, very efficient in how, na and how they manage their inventory. So they can drive costs down. They're very efficient in delivery. As a retailer, you're competing with them, so you have to have just as efficient supply chain. You have to get ahead of them in terms of what kind of deals you offer so you can compete in the market. So that's one thing. The consumer behavior is changing. That's, that's an, another big thing. Millennials, right? They have, they're a problem in, <laughs> in many areas. Uh, and uh, retail is one of them. They don't want to shop the same way. They don't want to go browse the aisles. They want to start maybe on mobile and uh, co co continue on a computer, then go to the store and check something out and not buy it and come home and order online. How do you track that entire customer journey and make sure that they remain engaged? So retailers have to go into omni-channel analytics, which means you have to bring all this data in addition to everything you have in store, you have clickstream data now. You understand how they, whether they visited your web properties, whether they add something and found a comparable thing and removed uh, from their shopping cart and added a new thing. So you can incentivize them to buy your product and it gets more and more complicated from there. So how do we help solve this problem? We have a unified analytics platform, by which I mean we try to uh, handle all the use cases end to end. We have a managed ETL team. So if you are a retailer, you don't want to deal with getting your data into our platform. We have a cloud uh, hosted service for your data. We can do it for you. We have self service tools if you want to bring your own, uh, either from the beginning or if you want to add data sources after we finish getting your data into the system, you could do it. And we are what we call an ELT solution. You don't have to define a schema. You can get all your data in there. It could be JSON or it could be CSVs, whatever and you all the transformations inside our system. The second thing we do is we allow you to analyze at, uh, at a very large scale and we have specialized functions for things like time series. Uh, so if you're doing stock analysis, you can do like a fast Fourier transform in a database or Markov chain Monte Carlo. We have R Python integration. So we have a lot of analytics you can achieve just inside the database without moving data anywhere. And one way we do this is uh, when we run something like R or Python, they share the same memory with the database process. So typically, when you talk to a database provider, they would copy the data to an R process. It's overhead, uh, it's slower. We're doing these things extremely uh, fast and efficiently. So uh, once you <coughs> get the data, put it in there, a lot of our clients want to collaborate on that data. It could be their teammates, they built something, they want to give, it to, give them access so they can work on it, or it could be uh, a retailer want to show what their inventory looks like to a supplier so they can be proactive about when something is going to go out of stock <clears throat> or how things uh, sell in conjunction. Uh, and sometimes they monetize through our platform. So we give them uh, high granular access to what cells uh, people can see, what level of granularity they can aggregate, <clears throat> or what level they can drill down to. Uh, so depending on you know, how much they pay to the retailer through us, uh, we'll give them an assortment of data sources. Uh, so data monetization is part of our collaboration system. And lastly, at scale, and I'll give you a quick demo and we'll have more demos coming uh, after that uh, aerial will do. Uh, we are very scalable. In a lot of cases, we are dealing with petabytes of data, many trillions of rows of data. Given if you're doing 20, million, 20 billion items a day, it adds up quickly over the years. <clears throat> so I'll switch to Tableau and I'll give you a quick example. I'm assuming this is the right one. <clears throat> So let's look at uh, the number of records we have. This is 96 billion rows. Uh, let's see what our total sales number is. That is some 300 something billion. And let's break it down by years. And of course, this is extremely fast. It's unreal. <laughs> and uh, so you can hear from a lot of vendors on the floor if they're still around here, they will talk about uh, millisecond responses to billion row queries. And you know, magicians aren't supposed to share their secrets, but I'll let you in on it. So a lot of these things are cached. 
because uh, you cannot analyze 90 billion of, uh, rows of data in uh, 10 milliseconds. And uh, the reason for that is, and, and it's a valid use case, because if you're building a dashboard, it is designed to answer a very narrow problem. So you can tell here are the things are going to select, these are all the options, and pre-compute all of those, uh, and optimize your uh, system to be very efficiently answer those queries. Uh, so we're doing that as well, and I, uh, I'm happy to say that this is the least impressive part of the demo. Uh, we'll, we'll go into more stuff that other people don't do. Uh, and when I say unified analytics, this is what I mean. You don't have to have a separate system for dashboarding and a separate system for ad hoc analytics. We try to bring all of them in one place. Uh, and uh, I'll give it to Ariel so uh, she can give you uh, an in-depth demo of our capabilities. Awesome. So we're going to jump back and sort of review the problems that we're going to face. Um, and then I'll go into a live demo of the tool and some applications um, in Tableau. So we talked about the two problems we're going to solve today our product affinities and data densification. So let's walk through a little bit more closely what those problems actually mean. So I'm going to assume that I'm a Skippy brand analyst, um, and I've been tasked with the idea that I need to figure out a cross-merchandising opportunity. So where else should I place my creamy Skippy peanut butter in my grocery store to help drive larger baskets? Now I want to ensure that the product I place it next to has a high affinity to help increase volume and to bring in more customers. Um, but I got to be specific about the location, right? I want to drive the largest baskets. I want to cannibalize on a certain type of shopper behavior. So we're going to walk through how to do that in the tool using Discover. Um, it's a very simple function that we'll be able to write to, to run an affinity. Um, and for those who've done this um, in, you know, in Tableau or in SQL, you can imagine that it's number of multiple joins. And that can get really expensive over time. I'll actually run that for you really quickly on that 96 billion row table that Boris showed you. And then after that, we're going to run through one more question of data densification. So I'm going to assume a year has passed as my Skippy brand analyst. Um, and I've been using Discover for a year. And now let's try and talk about which of my promotions performed the best. And the data set and the table that I'll look at has a start date and an end date, but it doesn't have all the days in between. So you can kind of think about this problem that your hotel stays here at Tableau, right? You checked in on maybe Monday or Tuesday and you're checking out on Friday, but there's no record in the data that says you were here Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Um, and that's hard to unify back to your, to your granular data. So we have a function that will densify that data and expand it out so you can see each individual row, and then I'll be able to understand what the lift was for my specific promotions. All right, so with that, I'm going to switch back to demo. All right, um, so I've, I'm going to go through the highlights of this. We don't have to walk through all the steps. And the first thing I did was I filtered down my data set from that 96 billion row table. And now we're looking at 900 mil, 990 million rows of granular transaction data. So just to level set for a second, let's walk through a couple columns. Um, every single swipe in a grocery store comes up as its own row of data. So if a customer purchases multiple items in a basket, they'll have one unique transaction ID. So we see this customer here bought three items. We see the day of purchase, the time of purchase, uh, the actual products that they bought, at what store did they buy it at, and then additional information like the sales, the price, the cost, um, if we have loyalty information, their customer number will populate here, and whether that item was on promotion or not, right? So this is very granular, each individual scan of data. And I filter down just to 2016, because I'm assuming that I'm going to plan my promotion for 2017, and I want to look at the subset of data that's most relevant to my shopper population, right? So that was the last complete year of data. Now, the first thing I need to do is I need to identify what these products are, right? I haven't actually memorized all of these SKUs by hard, so I'll go ahead and join in my product information and bring in attributes for all 990 million rows on the fly. So you can see here, I have a very simple join. I'm going to bring in from one SKU to the next SKU. And as soon as I hit run, if I scroll over here, I now have all of those dynamic attributes brought in, right? And this is you know, infinity scrolling. I can continually see all the product attributes brought in. Um, so that's all of my data. I have the description of the products, the departments, the categories, all brought in right on the fly. So now I'm actually ready to perform my affinity. I have my time selected of data that I want, and I have the product universe that I'm looking at. So I'll use my special retail basket affinity function. And I'm gonna, I've, I've tweaked it to, to make sense for my data set specifically, right? So I want to look at each basket ID as a unique identifier. So I'll take a look at each specific transaction ID. I'll take a look at the description of each product column, because I know I want to look at Skippy Creamy Peanut Butter, just the baskets that have Skippy Creamy Peanut Butter. 
and I'm going to compare it to the group of all other items. You can imagine, like, does peanut butter sell well with jams? Does it sell well with shampoos? What categories does it sell well with? Because I need to figure out where in my store to actually place my secondary locution or my end cap. I've set a threshold of 5%, so shoppers have to buy that secondary product at least 5% of the time when they're buying creamy peanut butter and I filtered my data set uh, to Skippy Creamy Peanut Butter. So let's take a look at what 990 million rows of data summarizes down to. And instantaneously, you can see that I now have 83 rows of data. So I have every line item for Skippy Creamy Peanut Butter, the group or the category that it sells well with. I see that I have 180,000 baskets that are actually purchased that contain Skippy Creamy Peanut Butter. This shows me how many baskets were sold that also have bags or wraps in them or beer um, or breakfast items. And the percentage of, let's say, breakfast items over the number of total baskets is this co-purchase percent. So 41% of breakfast baskets contains a Skippy item. Now, if I look over, I also have my affinity index. This tells me how likely Skippy creamy peanut butter is going to be in the basket compared to any other basket. So when baskets of breakfast items appear, you're about four and a half times more likely to actually have another item from the breakfast category than any other item. And higher affinity, right, that's a higher affinity than bread rolls. It looks like people aren't buying bread rolls and peanut butter together. And then I also have information about my average basket sales, right? So which is the biggest basket? Because this is the type of shopper behavior I really want to cannibalize on. Um, I'm going to run through a couple sorting and just clean up to the, to the end of my analysis. What I've actually done is I've reformatted my table so I can see the items that have the highest affinity on the top, so syrup and pancakes. Um, and then I also can take a look at those average basket sales. Um, while I love looking at granular tabular forms of data, 83 rows might be something I might want to visualize in a tool like Tableau. So let's jump in and see what that looks like in Tableau. So in my Tableau dashboard, we're running on that same granular data. Um, and what I've done here is I am plotting affinity index across the bottom, so the likelihood that the product is in my basket with peanut butter. And then on the left axis, I have the, the basket sale, so how large the basket is. And the color, so green or red, tells me about the co-purchase percent, so the percentage of baskets that contained the other item, so breakfast or syrup. And green are my opportunity areas, and we can think of red um, as sort of my areas where I might want to increase. Um, I'm actually filtered on natural creamy, so let's go back to Skippy peanut butter creamy. Again, that was on my, my 96 billion row table. Um, so I see right here that we have breakfast items, right? That's the one we were looking at before. It has a pretty good co-purchase percent. 40% of breakfast items are purchased with Skippy creamy peanut butter. But that's not, so that's not really an opportunity for me. But up here on the top, I see syrup, right? It has a very low co-purchase percent, only 8% but they're driving really large baskets, like $130. That's a lot of baskets spent in a typical grocery store. So I would go back to my Skippy team and I'd say, hey, I think we should place our secondary, you know, end cap or placement of Skippy peanut butter next to syrup. Let's try and cannibalize and drive up that co-purchase co percent. Um, and again, this is dynamic, right? I can play around with other peanut butters, maybe Skippy, you know, peanut butter pretzel bites, take a look at that opportunity area. Um, and this is all dynamically running on that table, but it's probably a better way to visualize this type of analysis in a chart than it is in a grid. Uh, maybe I should jump in and explain what just happened. So we started with the <clears throat> 96 billion row table. We filtered down to about a billion, 900 something million rows. And if you try to do market basket and Tableau, what you typically do is you keep joining the table back to itself because you want to have a combination of every item in the basket versus everything else. So if your average basket size is five, your 960 million will be times five. If you do another join, and we can have many items, there's no limit to how many uh, items we can have in the basket. So if you uh, imagine another join is 25 times a table, another join 125 times a table, now your table is 125 billion rows, another join you have, you know, it, it, it becomes unsolvable problem. And uh, so this is one advantage of our system because we have dedicated functions we built since we own the full database stack. Uh, we're not using the typical SQL kind of operation here. That's why it's really fast. I know you're looking at it and said, okay, you just did market basket on 960 million rows instantly. Uh, and uh, you know, after the talk, if you have uh, questions, we could talk about performance because we performance tested this against many other uh, uh, commodity databases. So there's a significant performance difference uh, that we were observing. Uh, <clears throat> so this is all happening live. We built that timeline. It's a parameterized query, uh, like a stored procedure, that is tied to that dropdown. So when we make a selection, it's rerunning that whole pipeline that you see multiple step pipeline live to give you a new affinity result.
Awesome. So let's jump back to our Discover tool. Um, I do want to sort of highlight to what, to what Bora was saying, right? Each iterative step I make here, we see an, a specific line item. So this timeline really follows my workflow in real time, and it really makes it easy for sharing and reapplying with somebody else on my team, right? They see exactly what I did. I opened my table, I filtered it down, I created an affinity, I sorted my affinity, whatever it might be. Um, and these steps are iterative, right? Everything that comes after feels natural. Um, all right, so let's jump to, to our second problem. Um, we're gonna walk through that data densification. Um, so we can see here that I have my table and it has start dates and end dates. I have my event and then my product that is on promotion. So similar to that like hotel problem we thought about, right? How am I gonna join this back to figure out which promotion drove the largest lift? If I was to do just a straight join, I'd only get the first start date of the promotion and the end date of the promotion. But what about all those middle days? Um, so we're gonna densify this table. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna create a column of the number of days or in each promotion. So we can see here that this promotion ran nine days, the next one ran seven, 15. And for illustration, right, it's, we're not expanding the table by the same number of days. Like the, the problem gets a little bit more complex when it's a different number of days each time. Um, so how are we gonna expand this table out? Again, we have one simple function that basically takes this number of days column and expands it out by those number of rows. So I see that first promotion that ran from Jan 1 uh, to Jan 7. I now have seven unique ide line items with the event and the product. Um, and I can really quickly, through a number of other you know, operations, I can create a column that actually creates the date. So I'll just shift some of my, shift some of my dates up and down based off of the number of days in the promotion. Um, that'll leave me with a date column here. So here's my unique date. Uh, and I'm gonna skip the boring stuff of arranging the columns and just skip to the end. Um, and we have a clean table now, right? So for each individual date, I have the event, and then I have the product that was sold, and I've just filtered down to my Skippy Creamy peanut butter items that are interesting. So this is a table that I could then use to bring directly into my sales table to understand what the product's lift is from my specific promotions. Um, again, this is a really hard problem to do, to do in Tableau. Um, I think you have to use some level of detail functions to actually populate this out, um, and we have a specific function right built in the tool for that. So let's make sense of this table. Um, I've ran all my promotions. We've flown through time. We're now in 2017 of data. So I filtered my data set just to 2017. Um, and let's see how these promotions actually did. Which one drove the largest left? So the first thing I'll do is I'm going to narrow down to just baskets that actually contained Skippy peanut butter. Um, so I'm going to put a column in. And it basically is saying, look at each unique basket. Tell me if the description is equal to Skippy pe Creamy Peanut Butter, and if so, give me a flag that says yes or no. So none of these baskets actually contain Skippy Creamy Peanut Butter, so that's not necessary for my analysis. Now let's watch this row count of 949 million rows drop when I filter down to just my baskets that contain Skippy Creamy Peanut Butter. So now we're at 3.5 nine, six million rows instantaneously. And I see this flag here, right? Because these baskets must contain Skippy Creamy Peanut Butter. It's right here in my first one in these line items. So now I focus, narrow down my universe of products just to the ones of interest. And we're gonna bring in that expanded table that I just developed a few seconds ago in the tab before, right? So I'm gonna join on my expanded table and bring in the event information into my new table. So I'll see over here. If the item was bought on promotion, what event was it actually bought on? Um, now, another problem that I might want to analyze, you know, as a, as a good brand analyst, like how do holidays actually affect this spend, right? Are people approaching these things on certain holidays? Are there certain holidays that are closest to a larger basket? Um, now, a holiday calendar obviously has the date that the holiday was on um, and then the event name of that holiday, but not all promotions or transactions are going to occur on a specific holiday. So let me figure out which transactions were purchased closest to a holiday. This is sort of we think of as a fuzzy join or a fuzzy match. Um, and we have a function right built in the tool to do that. So I'm going to join to my holiday table. And in my join configuration, I'm going to say allow next closest match. So find me the holiday that is before my date of transaction purchase, right? Um, and I can do that on my, my dynamically on my 3.59 you know, million, 6 billion rows, whatever it is. Now I have the closest holiday. So I see New Year's Eve was the closest holiday to purchase, and that was instantaneously brought in, and that's a fuzzy join right there for you, Belt. All right, so let's skip through a couple of things. I realize we only have about five minutes left. Um, I do want to show you one of our, you know, 
our G functions, or the way I like to think of them as our secret sauce functions. They allow you to aggregate data really quickly in a table without removing any type of granularity. Uh, so here I'm calculating the sum of each basket. So for each transaction ID, give me the sum of that basket. And when I run that, I'll see now all of the total sums of each specific basket here. So the ones that are duplicating, those are means that those are individual line items that are all summing up to that basket total. Here's the next basket, that's $74. Um, but so now we have you know, the event brought in, we have our holiday, we have our basket. Let's summarize just to one row of data for each specific transaction. So I actually get to see um, the basket sum, the event that it was purchased on, and maybe the transaction ID. So I'll just filter to one row of data. And now I've jumped to 151,000 rows, and I see that for each row of data, I have the basket sum and the promotion that it was bought on, that actual event. Uh, and guys, we, we're almost there, we're on our last step. We're actually ready to summarize our data and answer our final business problem. So once again, we're trying to figure out which of these promotions or events drove the largest lift, which one had the largest average basket sale. So I'll pivot on my data in the end here. I'm gonna say, take a look at each event and give me the average of the basket sales. Um, and just like that, we have five rows of data. So anything that doesn't have an event means that was Skippy creamy peanut butter baskets that were not bought on promotion. So that average basket size is about $93. Um, whereas when you know, Skippy is purchased near produce, it's about $102. And that makes sense, because you can imagine when people are buying produce, they're coming on their like, weekly grocery run, right? And if I put an end cap of peanut butter there, they might be more inclined to grab it and therefore further increase their average basket size. Versus when they're you know, buying it next to jam, which is already really close to peanut butter, they're probably making that purchase anyway. Um, but it seems like people do not like to buy Skippy uh, with frozen items. So that's good to learn for next year. No more frozen fish and peanut butter. Um, and with that, we've run through, through a couple market basket analyses on enormous amounts of data, right? Um, so we did an affinity analysis instantaneously on 96 billion rows. We're able to connect live and visualize that in Tableau. We performed a data densification, um, and we did a couple complex joins in there. Those are fuzzy joins as well. So we'll jump back to our, to our presentation and just sort of summarize uh, one of the last value propositions that 1010 Data and the Discover platform has um, is that we really remove the friction between big data and their users, right? And to do this, we can unify enormous number of data streams. We saw some joins in, in the demo. Uh, we can easily activate insights. So as a Skippy brand analyst, I can go back to my team with all of the learnings that I've, I've brought. Um, and then finally, we can actually share and reapply this knowledge. So with that, we'll say, we'll say thank you. Uh, and, and feel free to stop by our booth to learn a little bit more um, or if you want to, you know, get a free trial of the product as well. And I'll stick around if you have any questions. Ariel has to run to catch her flight. <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you.